Yeah, okay. okay, so thank you very much for coming to our last installment of my Late Chain series. So just to have a brief recap of where we were last time. So the, uh, the, 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 the Hubei uh, revolutionaries, uh, there, was, there was an accident and then now the booklet of everybody who had ever liked the revolutionary uh, cause is on that booklet. The booklet is now in the hands of the governor of Hubei in Hunan. And so everybody was scared. He executed three people. And so now we're at the night, October 10th, 1911, which is obviously the, the date where Taiwan and the Republic of China celebrates to be the national holiday, the national, the birth of modern China. And the way that it happened was actually very random. So that night, uh, everybody was really nervous. And then one of a very, uh, uh, like a, like a low-level uh, leader of a small regiment, uh, Tao. Sorry, we have to go back to the tyranny of all these uh, Chinese names. Tao. And they were like people just talking, talking, talking. And there was this one guy, this, this soldier called Jin. Jin was, um, he was, he was trying to sleep. Holding to a rifle. Holding to a rifle trying to sleep. And then Tao just went up to him and said, Why are you sleeping with a rifle? Are you try, try, trying to uh, rise up and cause a revolution? And Jin was like, if so, so what? And so he started fighting, he started fighting, and suddenly, Chang, I call Chang, took his rifle and shot at Tao. And he died. And this is how the whole thing began. All these soldiers, all these soldiers that were like, maybe pro-revolutionary or just maybe not part of the Qing regiment, said they, they all, everybody was part of Qing, but then people who maybe not as loyal, so they, or they all fled to this tower in uh, Wuhan, and when and they all, and it opened the uh, all the regiments. They opened the uh, the uh, uh, the arsenal, took the rifles, and, start, and and took over the city. And now at the time it was about three to four thousand people. The uh, the governor of Hubei in Hunan is a guy called Rei Cheng. Great. It's amazing how um, I'm going to go a little bit uh, further. Um, the Ch Chinese uh, Qing history is very interesting. Everything is a, kind of like a mirror image. Rei Cheng, the guy who was the governor of uh, Hubei and Hunan, uh, uh, called Hu Guang, he's actually the grandson of a guy called Qi Shan, who signed the, OPM, who signed the uh, Treaty of Nanjing, uh, the, the, the treaty between the British and, and, and the Chinese uh, in uh, 1842. And so that marks the beginning of the late Qing. The guy who ran away from his post at the end of the late Qing story is his grandson. Okay? And so he, he was actually, he's actually kind of like a nice guy, just, just really, really spoiled. Kind of like a male version of like Paris Hilton or something like that. And so he had like, he, like he would name his own opium like pipes. He would, uh, he, he had like a hundred dogs. He was like a huge dog lover. But then uh, the irony was when the soldiers came, revolutionaries came, even though he had 10 times the army, he fled. And he actually ran through the dog hole and went to, the, uh, to, went to one, of, one, of the, uh, one of the battleships uh, on the Yangtze River. Because as, as, you, uh, pro, as, as you recall, the, uh, the, Hubei is here, which is right on the Yangtze. And so when he fled, the, the whole city was taken over. And when it was taken over, what to do? Uh, what, uh, at the time, the, 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 the top guy, the top leader, was only like a, like, like, like a, uh, like a very low-level official. So they, they went to this one guy who was particularly nice to all soldiers, including the revolutionaries, a guy called Li Yuanhong. He's going to come back up again and again. Li. Okay? He actually fought in the uh, Sino-Japanese War, and then he was, he's supposed to be, he, he's always been known as to be the, the nice guy in the army. He was actually, for, for some accounts, he was actually hiding under the bed. He was actually scared, but that, that, that's actually not true. It was just some tr people trying to uh, have a bad name for him. He was actually standing behind curtains. People took him, and as he was shouting, please don't hurt me, please don't make me a rebel, please don't make me a rebel, cut his pigtail off. Okay, and force him to be the leader of the revolution. And so this is how this uh, colonel became the uh, leader of the revolution. And as that, as that happened, uh, the, 
the whole of China, if you recall from last from last meeting, it was basically it's always a fight or a cooperation between the government, the elites, and the people. Now the elites, because、uh, the government would not grant the constitutional rights to the elites, which was forming in the form of a、um, provincial parliament, they all suddenly、uh, went against the government. So within a few days, fifteen of the eighteen. In the provinces, as in not as in the Han people, not counting Tian,、uh, Tibet and and Xinjiang and Manchuria and Mongolia, they all went. They 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 actually all、uh, went independent, and they went independent.、Uh, the central government became very very nervous. So it's like, what to do? What to do? What to do? What to do? So they tried to get、um, a、uh, a general to come and、uh, you know, put down the revolution. And so, if you recall from the last one, the、uh, the by the time the Qing The Qing army was comprised of so-called the New Army, which were tra- who were trained at, in a German、uh, way with German uniform. And then, so the by far the most powerful is called the Beiyang Army, f- founded and trained by Yuan Shikai. Yuan Shikai, as we recall from last time, was、um, because his power was so great that the、um, that, that the Emperor Puyi, the the, the young Emperor Puyi's father. Uh, forced him into early re- retirement, and took the power from、uh, try to take the power and actually give it to all his cousins or friends. So one of the so the person who was in charge was a guy called Yin Chang. Yin Chang, as you can see here,、uh, is that Chinese guy over there. He has、uh, he actually studied in Germany, and、uh, and but the only thing that he learned was trying to curl his mustache like William the Second. That's the only thing he learned. Like apparently he knew no German everything, so he was in charge of the armed forces. He actually he did it very reluctantly, and so he took the Bei the all the Yuan Shikai's strongest Beiyang army went all the way down to、um, Henan and stopped. He was actually in the train. He's always he was never in the front of the action, and suddenly he heard the revolution was coming. So he's trying to run. As he was running, he realized that oh actually it's just a bunch of peasants picking cotton. So you can kind of tell how competent he was. So he came back to Beijing and said, "There's, I can't do anything. I can't do anything." And more importantly, the people who were actually in charge, or needed China to be stable, were the British, because the British, all the way in the late Qing period, had seventy percent of China's trade. That's why, if you recall from two lectures、uh, before, it was the British who made sure that China was in one piece, because the only way for the British to Continue to enjoy the resources of China is to make sure that China is in one piece. And so, when this happened with fifteen provinces going independent, the British came. The British, the、uh, the ambassador at the time was called Jordan.、Um, it, like if you live in Hong Kong, that's that's the same Jordan as Jordan Road. So, as, as in the MTR station, Jordan. And so that guy, that guy was actually really good friends with Yuan Shikai because Yuan Shikai was the Beiyang official, the person who took、uh, who took care of all the、uh, foreign affairs from 1901 to 1908, uh, 1907, uh, 1908. And so, and so as 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 this happened, he,、uh, Jordan and the American ambassador actually went to the Qing court and talked to Prince Chun, who was who was in charge, and said, you know, you need Yuan Shikai to come out. And you need Yuan Shikai, and then the whole Qing court was like, okay, we need Yuan Shikai because only Yuan Shikai can can be in charge of the army. And so they asked Yuan Shikai. Yuan Shikai, as as said, he was he was told that he had early retirement because of a foot injury. 